Uh, Rabbi Kaplan? Last week, I was talking about the kine of uh, the Maram May Rutenberg, Shali Srufabayish, which is towards the end of the kine. And I, I still have uh, what to say about it to explain a little bit more what I meant. I wanted to talk about two points, what the Maram May Rutenberg meant and also why we say kinus in general. I was talking about these, the line over here, that he talks about the Shreyfus at Torah, and he asks a question, Eichu, how could it be? Nesuna Be'eish Ochlo, the one that was given in a burning fire to Ukel Be'eish Bosa. How could the Torah that was given in the Eish Ochlo be burned with the Eish Bosa people? The fire that people created can burn. I wonder to point out, we would never ask such a question. Look how far we are from the Hergeshim of the Maram and Rutenberg. Would we ever ask such a question? How could the Torah be burnt if the Torah was given in fire? Uh, the Torah was given in fire 3,000 years ago. And we're still learning the Torah and we believe in the Torah. And the fire of Torah was given it was 3,000 years ago and now we're learning it. So what's the big question? It was, it was Nesuna. And the Sunna Bay Shokhla, then it was the Sunna Bay Shokhla, and now it's burnt in the Anaish Bosa. We, we wouldn't ask, we're so, so far, our feelings are so, so far. We're not talking about our Chokhma, our Avon, our Hergeshim, are so, so far from the Hergeshim of the Rishonim of the Kadosh alien. And and I want to get into a, a discuss a certain Nakudu that this brings me to think about in general. The union of taking things seriously. Taking things to everything that we have, that we see and we hear and we feel in our lives is important, is heavy. Like the line in the Sipuri Mises of Rav Nahum Resver that we always, always keep saying it over and over again. In the first story of Rav Nahum Bresler, he says that the messenger of the king came in looking for the Basa Melot, the princess. He came into a certain, uh, a certain palace that he found on the way, and he asked, What's important over here? And they answered him over here, everything is important. Uh, Rabbi Kaplan. What? Uh, you'll just let me say a word here. Yeah. A astrologically, that Rabbi Kaplan and Avdechan Neman, the producer, and also Rabbi Nachman of Breslov have something in common. Yeah. Uh, that our astrological charts have very little air. And that's a simon with a chart oh. without air. Everything is important. Oh. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying of it now. To those listeners that don't know what astrology means and what air means, so I trust the producer that he'll give a few lectures and explain what it all means someday. But the meanwhile... What we're saying is that everybody is created in a different situation, a different time, and a different um, um, teva. And there are people that we call lightweights, and there are people that we call heavyweights. And lightweights means they don't take things so seriously, and the heavyweights, they take everything seriously. Yet... Even the us heavyweights that take everything seriously, we have a lot, a lot of avoda to work on ourselves to really reach the level, the level of the tzaddikim, the level of the kedusha alien, 
the level that we're supposed to reach, we have a, still a lot of work to do. Even though this is what we say that we were created in such a, that we were born in such a place that we have a teva of being heavyweight. Not only that's a potential that we have, and we still have a lot of work to do. And what I wanted to bring out is, again, Rab Nachman Breslover said that it, that they answered the messenger of the king over here everything is seriously and i would say when we say over here it means this world in this world everything is seriously yet on the other hand the hester upon him is so so great that what you see you see a world of lightness you see a world of hester upon him we see a world that the whole purpose is the whole purpose of all the hard work that we do is to have minutes of lightness, of to rest, to enjoy ourselves, to entertain. And it's it goes so far that in modern Hebrew, in the Chiloni world, there's such a thing as Latzeit Levalot, to go out and to be mevale, actually, the, in, in its real meaning in the Gemara and Brochus stuff, it means to waste, to, to, to make it uh, uh, be ruined from rove use. Levalot, it should be ruined, it should be worn out. Archia Bale Sifsosenu. Yivlu Sifsosechem Milomar Dai, right? I don't know what the word is in English. Um, Bolo. How do you say it in English, too? Anyway, if any of the listeners could help us out, I would be Marcus Hover. Anyway, there's such a thing as to be Mivale. I also thought it meant to swallow, but let's not. No, that's Bolea. We're talking about Levala, Bala. It means to waste time because it's in very simple language. Let's say Levalot. To go out and be Mavale. And it's a whole taboo. It's a whole culture of going out and wasting time. Now, there's no such thing thing in Yiddish case, when we say everything is important, it also refers to time. Every minute of time is important. As it's known that the girl, when his sister came to meet him after many years, says so he just said hello and talked a few minutes and goodbye, and then he said, they're calling me from the next world. I don't have time. I don't have time to waste. And all the tzaddikim were like that. They felt the time that they had in life, every minute was a matanam in a shamayim that they were given. They can't just, you can't just take this present and waste it. Uh, Rabbi yeah. Kaplan, what? you know the famous story of Rav Yosef Chaim Zonenfeld? Yeah. You know it. You want to yeah, tell it? Just, uh, when the king came to meet him, the king of Austria, Franz Josef, whatever he was, yeah. he asked him, how old are you? He says, I don't know. So yeah. I said, how can you not know? So he told them, when you're giving, somebody gives you, pays you off what he owes you, uh, you open the envelope and count the money. But if somebody gives you a gift, you don't count it. So every day Hashem has given me a gift, so I don't it count it. It's a gift, so it's not nice to stand in front of Hashem and count how, many, how much did you give me, $100 or $200, that's not nice. And by the way, if you mentioned already, that's the explanation that the Ishbitra gives in the Sefer Beis Yaakov for the issue of eating Dam. Dam is as Posik says, Adam one nefesh. Hashem gives you food, he says. So you don't, you don't uh, take, take it and open it up in front of it, open up the present. He gives you a present, you don't open up the wrapper and look at it in front of him. The same thing, Hashem gives you food to eat. He gives you meat, he gives you an animal to, to shech the need. But if you take the dam, that's like opening up the wrapper and looking, looking, what's the, what's the essence of this thing? The chaim, where does the chaim of it come from? Wow. 
you got to leave them alone. You're supposed to feel when you eat, you're supposed to feel like an omid lefne Hashem, and you have to feel that you're, you're accepting from him his presence and not open up the wrapper and look at it while he's giving it to you. Getting back to the subject, we're saying that by, by true Erlach Hayidin, everything is important, every minute is important. But not just every minute is important. Everything that happens to us in our life, every little thing, it, 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 it could have been, it would have been possible. That person would go in the streets, and everything he sees, he would learn, it. he would learn a limit from it. He would, he would learn a lesson from it. I mean, we, we can't, we, we can't the whole time look at everything and be learning lessons, but theoretically I'm talking, it could have been like that. Yep. I mean, you, you see an animal run, running after the other. There's what to learn from him. The great Tzadikim, they learned many lessons from the Kazakhs, the way they, they're disciplined, they're, uh, how they fought war. There was a lot what to learn from him. From the, there's a whole folklore, of a Jewish folklore of stories and sayings from Napoleon that they learned Limudim from. We don't know if they're true or not, but it doesn't matter. You see, that's how Tzadikim were, that they learned from everything they saw and everything that happened in the world. The, the, the Pasuk says in Mishlei, Al Karim, Al Stei Ish Otsa Ovartiv, Al Karim Adam Hasar Leiv, I went by the field of a lazy person. I saw it's full of thorns and but, um, grow, things are growing there. Um, he says, I learned a musa. Look what can happen when you're lazy. He saw a field of a lazy person that was all destroyed. He learned the Musa from it. He didn't just go by and say, oh, isn't that disgusting how this field looks? And go further. He saw that, he learned the Musa. And I want to go even further. I want to say, you go in the morning, you go out of shul. You see people. You're diving in a minion every day. You see the same people in the minion. You finish the diving you wrap up your thousand film and you go. But the derech of the 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 the, the, free of the, kedoros, the earlier Dor generations, the earlier meaning the the previous generation was you say good morning one to another. And I myself saw I there was a time there uh, every like once a week maybe I used to go to the base Yaakov Shul in Beis Yisrael. You you know where that is? Yeah, of course. In in Beis Yisrael, and and on top of the Shtibra there, there's a shul that's called Beis Yaakov. Out of a seeking minion. and there was uh, like twelve people, maybe all Jewish Shalmi Jews. And they each one at his seder, what he did, how he said, what niggin he used. And in the end of the davening, every day they used to say, good morning, good morning, good morning. Each one would say good morning one to another. And, and you, you could look at it like a small thing. But on the other hand, it's a very serious thing. People greet one another. There's a say that Achaim is, and people, you're together, you dive in together in the same minute. And every day you dive in together. You have to say good morning, yeah. You have to say good morning to other person. Maktim Shalom, you have to be Maktim Shalom to the other person. And 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 it's it's and and the emes you could look at it. You're supposed to look at it as an avodas Hashem. There was an avodas Hashem of davening, and I, and I would think that some of those hidden there they learned before davening. They made a chonus for the davening, and then there's the davening. There's the yeshmei rabba, and in the end of the davening, there's a seder that you say good morning one to another. You're mekayim the mitzvah. Uh, Rabbi Kaplan, we're gonna we're gonna take a break now. Thank you.